And now we are coming to poles and zeros. If we want to, if we look at this transfer function, we can write it in another way. We can write a function by having the highest co the coefficients of the highest order outside of this sum, then we can write it as a product, a product S minus ZK divided by a product of S minus PI, in which PI is a pole and ZK is a zero. So that are the solutions of the numerator and the denominator. So basically the poles are the solution of this equation, which is called the characteristic equation of the system and the zeros are the other one. And this characteristic equation basically comes from the homogeneous differential equations in which there are no excitations, you see? We, if we solve this, then the solution of this one is the poles. So the poles, and that's important that you understand uh, physically, are a property of the system. If a piano string is tuned to an A, but I don't hit it, I don't hear the A, but it's still it tuned to the A and the frequency, the pole there is still this 440 or 220 or 880 or whatever hertz. So that is important to, that you realize it's a property of a system because, you, but you have to find them. Unfortunately, I don't have, I have many, a lot of measurement equipment here, but I don't have a pole measurement instrument. I have spectrum analyzers and network analyzers, but and, and I can view a step response on an oscilloscope, but I don't have, and it doesn't exist as well, a pole zero analyzer. In order to find the pole, of course, you must excite the system and look at the responses. Because if there is no signal, you cannot measure anything. That's as simple as that. So we have to put a signal on it and then through analysis of the response, find out where are poles and zeros. And this is obvious, this is not always so clear. So there can be a response in the absence of an input signal. You see the solutions of the different homogeneous differential equations. There is no excitations. There can be a response, and that is the result of the stored energy in the system as we started with. So the zeros are the complex frequencies at which there is no signal transfer. Signal transfer means that there is an excitation and a response. There is an observer observing the output signal somewhere. Let's say if I hit the piano, if someone hits the piano string here in my living room, but I am sitting in another apartment somewhere, then I don't hear it and still, uh, the, the string is hit, so the transfer is then zero, and there must be a zero on the pole, probably. It's a non-observable pole. I'm just too far away to observe it. So poles and zeros must be real or must appear as pairs of complex conjugates because they, they, they stem from the coefficients of the differential equations and the, the coefficients of the differential equations are just real things, real coefficients, real variables. So that is poles and zeros, introduction. Now we can write such a complex uh, uh, expression uh, let's say the expression of the characteristic equation, which is a higher order expression, a higher order differential equation, we can write it as a sum of first order, as a set, sorry, of first order differential equations. And in linear algebra, this is called the companion matrix that you can do. So this equation, the homogeneous differential equation, can the coefficients A can be found in this way, can be, with a matrix and then you have that the determinant of s times the identity matrix the diagonal matrix with only unity on its diagonal minus a is the characteristic characteristic equation and maybe remember that the poles were the solution of this equation equals zero so, and if you recognize this expression like the determinant of SI minus A, 
then you probably rec recognize the eigenvalue problem. So the eigenvalues of A are the poles of the system. So that's important to know. And later on, we will, later very soon, we will go to network theory and see how we can apply this and how we can use this because that's at the end what we want. At the end of this lecture, we want to have an intuition to find poles and zeros. It's not always very simple to calculate them and it's definitely not, and we are definitely not here to let you calculate the eigenvalues of uh, higher order systems or whatever. That's not at all the intention what we are, what we want to do. We want to show you the relations and then show you a method that is based on these relations and these properties, and then see how we can develop intuition for estimating poles and zeros in networks. And we will do also an example for this.